All right, welcome to our session uh, discussion on ozone layer depletion. First of all, we'd like to see what is ozone. So ozone is a form of oxygen with three oxygen atoms, oxygen three. How is ozone produced? It is formed when oxygen absorbs solar radiation. So the, the combination becomes oxygen three by the presence of solar from the, I mean radiation from the solar facilitated the combination of oxygen to oxygen three. So ozone now, uh, ozone layer. So ozone is a triatomic form of oxygen, oxygen three, found in the Earth's upper and lower atmosphere. Uh, the ozone layer is situated in the stratosphere, about 15 to 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Uh, see how if this is our planet Earth from the surface 10 kilometers that is the troposphere uh, if you go further that is 40 kilometers from the surface it is stratosphere and the mesosphere is how many 15 kilometers uh, hemosphere is uh, 300 kilometers and exosphere and above it is 400 kilometers altitude. So for our case, to be specific, we are talking about the stratosphere here, uh, where 19% of, of the ozone is in the stratosphere. However, it produces, it goes down. 10% uh, of the ozone is in the troposphere, the first one, the first sphere mainly is covered in the second uh, sphere. So here, yeah, the amount of ozone within the stratosphere varies according to the altitude. As you go further, it changes. Why is the ozone layer important? Ozone acts as the Earth's protective shield against the sun's harmful uh, ultraviolet radiation, UV, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So without the ozone layer, this layer that covers the Earth's surface from the radiations from the sun, would have been not possible, would not exist on Earth if there were no ozone layer in between. Why life would not exist? Exposure of ultraviolet rays result into the following. So if those rays from the sun would come to the Earth's surface directly, sunburn would have happened. Uh, that is readiness of the skin could occur to the human beings which is due to the increased blood flow in the skin caused by a dilation of superficial blood vessels in the means as a result of exposure to UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation. So also tanning refers to the delay pigmentation of the skin or marine pigmentation which is usually becomes noticeable one to two days after exposure to the sun and gradually increased, uh, increases for several days, persisting for weeks or months. Uh, premature of aging of skin. One of the chronic effects resulting from repeated exposure to 
UV radiation is premature aging of skin, which encompasses a number of clinical signs that reflect structural changes in the immunes. The means. These clinical signs include dryness or wrinkles. Wrinkles, uh, someone who look like an old one, or if at all, you smear some oil in your face, but it will be very dry. Uh, suppression of the immune system, of the resulting from exposure to UV radiation, is believed to be an important contribution to the development of uh, nomenclanomal skin cancers. Skin cancers would be a result of suppression of the immune system due to exposure to the UV radiation. Damage to the eyes. UV rays can also damage the eyes as more than 9% of UV radiation is observed by the front of the eyes. Okay, corneal damage, cataract and macular degeneration are all possible chronic effect from UV exposure and can ultimately lead to blindness. Skin cancers, as we have said, are the most commonly occurring uh, in terms of incidence in the world. Uh, this UV radiation is emitted from the sun with a wavelength from uh, 200 to, four, to 400 nanometers uh, nautical mile. UV radiation is divided into three ranges. Uh, you can see 300 to four, four, 400. Yeah. If it is B, it is 200. 190 to two to 320 uh, nanometers and UV uh, C to 20, I mean 200 to 290. The shorter the wavelength, uh, the shorter the wavelength they are, more harmful to biological life. That means with a shorter wavelength, that means they are having high speed if they come. Uh, to you, they can easily penetrate because they are high supersonic speed. Ozone layer depression. So, let's see what is ozone layer depression. The ozone de layer depression is caused by chemicals called CFCS. CFCS. It's very important to note here. Chlorofluorocarbons, that is CFC. These CFCs escape into the atmosphere from refrigeration and uh, propellant devices and uh, processes, and they are so stable they last for decades. This long life allows some CFS, CFCs to eventually reach the stratosphere. As you have said that, they last a very long time. The chemicals that make up CFCs, mainly chlorine, uh, fluorine, float around the stratosphere, breaking up ozone molecules. They react with ozone uh, molecules. One molecule of CFC can destroy more than 100,000 molecules of stratosphere ozone. So you can see the danger of it. The ozone depletion process, ozone depletion process. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. So from the sun, from the sun here, there is this layer. And you can see the this this side here. We have we have the ozone layer here in between. The ozone layer in between. And this side also you can see uh, the ozone layer, chlorine, ozone layer, chlorine, CFC there, radiation, that is radiation from the sun penetrating the ozone layer, uh, CFC production here, CFC production, destroy ozone layer, deplete ozone layer. There are stages, there are stages one, two, three, four, and five. So this is uh, the ozone depletion process is indicated by this uh, diagram from stage one. That means you are now producing the CFs. They come to react with the uh, oxygen-3, that is ozone. So you deplete it make some holes by which you allow now the UV radiation to pass through and enter our environment or our planet Earth easily. So the output, will, uh, the outcome or the effect will be depleted ozone. More UV can pass through uh, because you, the C L chlorine has destroyed the ozone or reacted to form another thing, more skin cancer will be uh, noted to the human beings dwelling in the given area. Ah. So, you can see an ozone layer it's a layer that is covering the earth surface in the stratosphere or top sphere. Solar radiation, the sun emits the radiations, but they are not they are not they are not supposed to pass through this if if at all the ozone layer would have been strong enough to resist the penetration of this. So harmful uh, atra Violet lays now can if they can pass and enter our planet Earth or our environment, so the output will be the effect of our, our life that is something like a cancer and the like. Even to the plants will be affected. Tropo, troposphere. So you can see the rays here being produced. These are the CFs. So responsibility for ozone emerge each year. There are some natural, such as volcanic eruptions, which can range from one up to five uh, percent. Others sources are 15 up to 20 yearly. The ozone hole is a region or of depleted ozone in the stratosphere over the Antarctic that happens at the beginning of the southern hemisphere spring. The place in this uh, in our planet where the hole has been noted that is increasing due to the biological effects and the geographical position of the Antarctic. The ozone has been depleted area there and other places. Where is the ozone layer hole? Ozone hole largely restricted to areas of Antarctica 
ozone hole may pass over tip of the South America, likely to happen in Southern America. Ozone hole seldom comes near Australia. That means the ozone, uh, ozone layer at the area of Australia also indicates sometimes to be deplete, uh, depleting. So the effect of ozone layer depletion. Why protect the ozone layer? That's a very important question to note. Ozone depletion leads to excessive UV B radiation. Excessive UV radiation leads to the following. As we have talked about more skin cancers, eye contract, cataracts, less productivity of plants, loss of uh, immunity to diseases, uh, adverse effect on plastics, image to ocean ecosystems, image to ocean ecosystems. So this are the effects that will be noted once this uh, layer is, is affected or there is ozone depletion, will be the result of the damaged ocean, adverse effect on plastics, loss of immunity to diseases, less productivity of plants, eye cataracts, more skin cancers will be noted to our bodies. So, protecting the ozone layer. So, protective measures to be taken in order to safeguard this ozone layer. We have to ban the use of CFs, fluoro, fluorocarbons, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCS, have to be replaced with something, current replacement are greenhouse gases, and they do not do, eh? and do not eliminate ozone depletion, just slow it down. Air quality standards, limit amounts of pollutants that can be emitted by pollution sources, those are the ways on how to control the ozone layer. What is being done about the ozone layer? What is being done now in order to control this? There is a Montreal Protocol Agreement on this since 1987. International Agreement is designed to protect uh, the stratosphere, uh, stratospheric ozone layer by phasing out ozone depleting chemicals, as I've said, the CFCs. Uh, so what is the Montreal Protocol at all? So the Montreal Protocol says that the production and the consumption of compounds that deplete ozone in the stratosphere chlorofluorocarbons, CFCS, halons, carbon, tetrachloride, and methyl chloroform are to be phased out by 2030. It is Montreal Protocol says regarding the control of ozone layer. So Montreal Protocol, Vienna Convention 1985 to improve the Protocol Framework Agreement. Uh, Montreal Protocol in 1987 phase out schedules for CFs and halons. Effect need to be continued. Create reliable models to gain a better understanding of the effect ozone depletion has on organisms living within different ecosystems. 
you have to create different models in order to come out with uh, a means of educating uh, enforcement of Montreal Protocol to reduce concentrations of chemical responsible for ozone depletion. Nitric chemicals being emitted gain a better overall understanding of just how ozone depletion is affecting our planet. So Montreal depletion substances here is a summary for Montreal Protocol control measures uh, depleting countries. Developing countries indicating total phase out by 2010, uh -huh. chlorofluorocarbons phase out end in 1995. So here is a summary on what is being done regarding the Montreal Protocol. So recovery wasn't there. Recovery. Since the adoption and the strengthening of the Montreal Protocol has led to reductions in the emission of CFCs, atmospheric concentration of the most significant compounds have been declining. These substances are being gradually removed from the atmosphere. By 2015, the Antarctic ozone hole would be reduced by only 1 million kilometers square out of 25. Complete, the, complete recovery of the Antarctic ozone layer will not occur until the year 2050 or later. So you can see uh, you are all to play in order to safeguard or to control the ozone layer for our own betterment. This makes the end for our discussion. Thank you.